uh, the service of a lot of hardworking lawyers out there who work for legal services, many of them who offer their services pro bono, who get no compensation whatsoever for the work they provide, and try to demean them by, by saying this is a trial lawyer bailout. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back his time. Uh, gentleman from Virginia. To the amendment, gentlemen's recognized for five minutes. Uh, but I, and I won't go into great length about it. The very fact that the president has failed to address the issue of entitlements has walked away from his own commission, the Simpson Bowles or Bowles Commission, that had the support of Senator Coburn and Senator Durbin leads you to activity like this. Many times members are frustrated to deal with this issue. We have $14 trillion of debt, and in a statement that I gave on the floor several weeks ago, I said, had I been a member of the commission, I would have voted for it. I think it was a missed opportunity. And I also said that failure to address the issue of dealing with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security will unfortunately re result and many times the poor will be hurt. And in the Bible, it says in Proverbs that when you give to the poor, you loan to God. And I am sensitive to that. But the very fact that the administration, the president appoints the commission, comes out of the big press conference, and then walks away from it leads you to some activity like this. This would wipe out illegal services. So I strongly urge members to oppose the amendment. And I urge members to contact the White House and ask them to support an entitlement reform, the Simpson Bowles package. Over the gentleman, yield. I yield to the gentleman. I, I appreciate uh, your yielding, Mr. Chairman, and, and I agree with you. I think, uh, first of all, I appreciate your opposition to the amendment. Uh, the, the big entitlement programs are going to have to be addressed. Uh, and what we are doing here in dealing with this small piece of the federal budget pie, that is domestic discretionary spending, there's no way we can find enough savings to make a real dent in the magnitude of our deficit and debt. That has to be done. And uh, I can understand your frustration about it. Uh, it's a frustration I think we all share. Um, I think the difficulty, frankly, that the administration is having is probably the same difficulty that the majority is having, and that is whoever puts the proposal on the table first gets their head taken off. Uh, and I think. Uh, probably the only way to get to yes, and there's no way we're going to be able to reform the entitlement programs in a partisan way. It has to be done in a bipartisan way, uh, as if, frankly, both parties can come together and put something on the table together. Uh, and I think that's what's going to have to happen, but you're right. Uh, there's no way uh, we're going to make uh, even a, a small dent in things uh, until we have that a bigger, more important conversation. Uh, and I thank the gentleman for yielding. Reclaiming my time, I, I believe that if President Reagan were President of the United States today, he would provide the leadership, because he did in saving Social Security. It was the Greenspan Commission, and he worked with a, in a bipartisan way. And I think if we had a President like Ronald Reagan, we would be resolving these issues. But with that, uh, I uh, urge uh, an opposition to the, to the amendment and yield back the balance of my, my time. Gentleman yields back his time. Gentleman from New York. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. The last thing we want to do, the last thing I want to do is prolong this debate this evening. It's getting late. But I think what is happening with these budget cuts under the disguise of budget cuts is that we are discussing some very serious issues. And at times we use words and we use phrases that should not go unchallenged. And so, first of all, I want to thank the, uh, the, the chairman of the subcommittee for his opposition to the amendment because he's got a history of being supportive. And he's a fiscal conservative. He knows that he wants to go after waste and, and high expenses and programs that don't function well. But he also has always had a belief that the person who may not have the most recourses in this, uh, uh, resources in this society should be given a shot at being protected. And I, and I want to join uh, Mr. Schiff in that we have to continue to be careful. To say that this is a tri lawyers bailout when we in fact have had incredibly serious bailouts in the last couple of years, uh, that's, that's a, a, a bad statement to make. Lastly, I'm old enough to remember President Nixon and I don't remember that he went around creating left-wing 
causes or left-wing programs. And again, I repeat, and it bears repeating, this was his creation, because within that complex human being known as Richard Nixon, there were a couple of things that were very interesting to, to analyze. And one of them was his fundamental belief that everyone in this country needed the ability to be represented and represented properly. Now, what's ironic is that the same folks who would destroy the Legal Services Corporation will not utter a word as we continue to protect people in this society, gain more power and more wealth, and never need a legal services lawyer for one of their issues, one of their cases. And so, as we look at these cuts, as we look at this desire to bring down the deficit, as we do all these things that I think on a bipartisan basis we believe have to be done, we also have to pay attention to the fact that we can't destroy that which is fundamentally sound in our society. Cut here and there, I understand that. That train left the station a long time ago. Destroy, totally wrong. And lastly, at the expense of repeating myself, you can't on one hand claim that we need to protect more than ever the Constitution and then tell somebody with a home that's being foreclosed that can't afford a lawyer that they can't get any assistance. This is the wrong way to go, and I really hope that this amendment is defeated and defeated soundly. Now the gentleman yield back. yields back his time. The gentlelady from Texas. Strike the last word. The gentlelady is recognized for five I, minutes. I appreciate the fact that the gentleman from Virginia has opposed this, but I just... Uh, wonder whether or not there's any shame when it comes to literally gutting the Legal Services Corporation some three hundred and twenty four million dollars and and practically eliminating any opportunity for justice I just want to repeat some of the words that were offered slush fund for special interests lobbying and political activities uh, we spent some time in the nineteen nineties on the Judiciary Committee looking closely at the Legal Services Corporation and frankly gave uh, generous oversight on some of the issues that might have suggested that there were other activities going on. When the Legal Services Corporation's nonprofits come from around the nation, you are seeing members of the bar uh, who are from major law firms, uh, major leaders in the community who are on the boards of these particular legal services uh, local offices, and they have the highest standard uh, of legal excellence that they try to portray and therefore try to encourage as it relates to the representation of poor people. My brother-in-law, to his death, was a legal services lawyer in New York. Not one time did I see him or hear of him doing anything other than attempting to do justice for people who could not achieve such. And I frankly believe when you talk about a continuing resolution, make it very clear, it is stopping programs in the middle of operation. It is closing 136 offices in midstream. It is laying off 300 lawyers in the middle of litigation that they are pursuing to keep Mrs. Jones in her home and to keep an elderly person who has been defrauded uh, by an unscrupulous contractor simply trying to fix an old home, she has no other option sometimes than a legal services lawyer. So I hope that we will see less of this. And might I just say it's interesting uh, that we have a difference of opinion. Uh, frankly, I don't think the president has walked away from any financial commission report. The majority in this house has every opportunity to present their cuts to entitlement and to begin the discussion. The president has not indicated he is not interested, uh, but well we recognize that this house is a revenue generating house and therefore with the responsibility now in the hands of Republicans, it is appropriate for the chairman of the budget committee and others to present their proposal for such. The president's budget cuts the debt. The president's budget has strength in going forward, but it has a purpose, competitiveness, morality, uh, and of course to rebuild America. I'm waiting on uh, the Republicans to present their proposal, and I'm sure that we will look closely and be able to work 
uh, in a bipartisan manner. But I would vigorously oppose any cuts of this measure at all to the Legal Services Corporation that is a mark for justice uh, in this country. I yield back. The gentlelady's time has expired. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from South Carolina. Those in favor signify so by saying aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. The opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The noes have it. And the amendment is not agreed to. For what purpose is the gentleman for request of the yeas and nays be taken? Does the gentleman ask for a recorded vote? Yes, sir. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from South Carolina will be postponed. The clerk will read. Page 208, line 16, section 1341, section 505A1 of Division B of Public Law 111-117 is amended. Section 1342, of the funds made available in Division B of Public Law 111-117, $1,740,000,000 is rescinded. Section 1343, unobligated balances available for emergency steel, oil, and gas guaranteed loan program account, $48,000,000 is rescinded. Section 1344, unobligated balances available are rescinded from Office of Justice Programs, $42 million. Community-oriented policing, policing services, $10 million. Title IV, Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies, Section 1401, all provisos under the heading Corps of Engineers, Civil Department of, of, the, Department of the Army, Construction, in the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1402, proviso under the heading Corps of Engineers, Civil Department of the Army, Mississippi River and Tributaries, in the Energy and Water Development and Related Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1403, the fifth proviso, seventh proviso, and eighth proviso under the heading Department of the Interior, Bureau of Reclamation, Water and Related Resources in the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1404, all provisos under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85 shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1405, all provisos under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Electricity Delivery and Energy Reliability in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1406, the proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Nuclear Energy, in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1407, the second proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Fossil Energy Research and Development in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1408, all provisos under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Science, and Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1409, the, the 13th proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Nuclear Waste Disposal in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85 shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. 
Section 1410, all provisos under the heading Department of Energy, Atomic Energy, Defense Activities, National Nuclear Security Administration, Weapons Activities, and Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1411, the proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Atomic Energy Defense Activities, National Nuclear Security Administration, Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation, and Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations <coughs> Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1412. All provisos under the heading Department of Energy, Atomic Energy Defense Activities, National Nuclear Security Administration, Office of the Administrator in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1413. The proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Atomic Energy Defense Activities, Environmental and Other Defense Activities, Defense Environmental Cleanup in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1414, the proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Atomic Energy Defense Activities, Environmental and Other Defense Activities, other defense activities in Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85 shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1415, the fifth proviso under the heading Department of Energy, Power Marketing Administration's Construction, Rehabilitation, Operation and Maintenance, Western Area Power Administration and Title III of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1416, Sections 105, 106, 107, 110 through 125, 205 through 211, 502 and 506 of the Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Appropriations Act 2010, Public Law 111-85, shall not apply to funds appropriated by this division. Section 1417, in addition, $50 million is what appropriated. What purpose does the gentlelady from Illinois seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk submitted through the pre-printing process and designated as Amendment 192. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 192, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mrs. Biggert of Illinois. Gentlelady is recognized for five minutes in support of her amendment. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, my amendment would cut funding for the Advanced Research Projects Agency, Energy, commonly known as ARPA-E, by $50 million and put that funding towards deficit reduction. Mr. Chairman, for my colleagues that know me, they know it is not easy for me to cut funding for energy research. I've always maintained that there are two priorities I believe in and will continue to promote in Congress. Energy R&D is one of them. I believe the greatest investments we can make to secure our economic competitiveness are those investments that cultivate scientists and engineers of the future and provide the research infrastructure from which they can innovate and create jobs. ARPA-E was first proposed in 2005 in the distinguished report entitled Rising Above the Gathering Storm. Model on DARPA, ARPA-E was recommended along with dozens of recommendations designed to spur scientific investment. These recommendations were authorized as a part of the First America Competes Act of 2007 and reauthorized again last year. Despite my strong support and leadership for, for Competes and its programs, I have had concerns about ARPA-E since inception. As a senior member of the Science Space and Technology Committee, our minority views on the President's fiscal year 2010 budget accurately reflect, reflected my sentiment, and I quote, those of us in opposition to ARPA-E maintain the view that creating a new agency to do work that is currently being done at DOE is not justified use of the limited funds available to the department. 
and we support the department's previous decision to not establish RPE, but to engage in RPE type projects within the current DOE structure, end quote. Most importantly, I have always believed that RPE threatens to divert resources from DOE's Office of Science, the largest supporter of basic research. That is why I secured language through Competes 2007 that would prohibit funding for RPE unless the Office of Science is fully funded. I felt that this was the most productive way to move forward with the RPE concept and prevent duplication or competition with other DOE programs. However, when we reauthorized Competes last year, this language was not included, and unfortunately, my attempts to limit RPE appropriations were unsuccessful. Supporting my concerns about spreading resources too, too thin, now Secretary Stephen Chu uh, has said that the, the following of RPE in testimony before the Energy Subcommittee in 2006. In funding RPE, it is critical that its funding not jeopardize the basic research supported by the Department of Energy's Office of Science. The committee's recommendations are prioritized, and its top recommendations in the re area of research is to increase the funding for basic research by 10 percent per year over the next seven years." End quote. Mr. Chairman, were it not for the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Stimulus Bill, ARPA-E would never have been funded. I urge my colleagues to join me in cutting ARPA-E funding and rejecting duplication and, and stretch resources. And I yield back. Gentlelady yields back her time. Who seeks recognition? Gentleman from New Jersey. Uh, Chairman, I claim time in opposition. Uh, Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I rise in opposition to the gentlewoman's amendment. We're here to follow up follow through on our pledge to right-size the government, and I appreciate my colleagues' amendment for that reason. However, in addition to enacting historic reductions in spending in this CR, we're also committed to an unprecedented level of oversight to ensure that every dollar spent by the federal government is indeed well spent. My colleagues' amendment would virtually eliminate the Advanced Research Projects Agency, Dash Energy, or ARPA-E as we call it. This relatively new program is getting positive early reviews for its strong management, its ability to execute, and its focus on American competitiveness. We certainly can and must debate which programs are the most worthy of taxpayers' dollars and which we should terminate. But the debate to end a potentially promising initiative and increase funds for, another, for other, another federal program, as this amendment does, must be thoroughly considered in more than five or ten minutes. I and the committee would be happy to work with my colleague in the fiscal year 2012 process to ensure the proper and thorough oversight and evaluation of this program. However, I must regretfully oppose her amendment. Gentleman You're yields back. back. Who seeks recognition? Gentleman from Arizona. I strike uh, the requisite number of words. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. I, I join the uh, chairman and his opposition to this amendment. It's a promising uh, program that already has provided uh, not only research, but the taking of the, of the research, finding private capitalization, and developing a products that can go forward. One of the problems that we found in the past, and for many years, that the Department of Energy has sometimes great problems in, in doing the basic research or funding basic research and has a difficult time getting out <coughs> to, the, to find capitalization and then being able to commercialize it. And ARPA-E is a process that is small but big in talent and is able to take innovative ideas, research, and take it to the next step with private capitalization. So it is a program that takes public investment, increases the investment by the private sector, and the outcome is innovation of products and new employment and new jobs. It is the way to uh, transform the Department of Energy to make it more effective and it would be a great loss to zero fund it at this time. And I, I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. The gentlelady from West Virginia. 
gentle, gentle ladies recognized for five minutes. Uh, rise uh, in support of the gentlewoman's amendment, although I had an amendment that was to follow this amendment uh, seeking to uh, 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 grab in $47 million from the ARPA program uh, to fund a, a jobs program that has been uh, uh, to restore the uh, clean coal research dollars that are uh, stricken in this con in continuing resolution. My amendment would have restored funding to the DOE's Fossil Energy Research and Development Program to maintain our commitment to domestic coal and natural gas, which powers our nation. It protects our environment and enhances our energy independence. Uh, certainly, I, being from the state of West Virginia, uh, this is a jobs issue for us. Uh, our coal industry is under serious attack in this administration, both uh, from the regulatory perspective uh, and from um, other uh, environmental um, areas and uh, we realize that 50 percent of the nation's energy is powered by coal. In order to use that most abundant resource that we have in our nation, we need to find ways to burn it cleaner and mine it more efficiently. Uh, for more than a quarter of a century, the fossil energy research has converted taxpayer investment into high-tech advances that in some way touch every single American's lives. Fossil energy is finding and testing new ways to use coal more cleanly and efficiently by producing energy from coal gasification and improving technologies to clean or capture or store the emissions from coal-fired power plants. Over 1,000 American pioneers are doing research in this area, many of them located in our state of West Virginia at the National Energy Technical Laboratory in Morgantown, West Virginia. The Morgantown facility is the only national laboratory devoted to fossil energy research. So while I'm unable to uh, offer my amendment to uh, strike the $47 million from the ARPA-E program, e program and uh, restore the 36, the 30 I did want to take this opportunity to emphasize uh, the feeling that I have and how important it is for us to move forward in a bold and uh, technologically superior way to find the way to use uh, our most abund our abundant resource. The advanced research projects happening at Fossil Energy Now will help keep clean, affordable energy from our traditional few resources as an integral part of our energy supply while we innovate and research our way to those new energy resources. And I yield back. Thank you. He yields back. It's on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Illinois. Those in this chair, uh, for purposes, the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of the gentlewoman from Illinois' amendment, which would strike funding for ARPA-E within the Department of Energy. There is little disagreement in Congress on the importance of fundamental advances in energy technologies to America's future economic and national security. It is a priority that we all share. The challenge lies in how best to structure the federal government's involvement in energy research and development to maximize use of limited resources. Republican members on the Committee on Science, Space and Technology have had serious reservations regarding the appropriateness of ARPA-E since it was first debated in the 110th Congress. A primary concern was that RPE would focus on late stage technology development activities that the private sector was already addressing, and we've seen that happen. While language was incorporate, incorporated in RPE's authorizing statute, directing the agency to support, quote, technical advances in areas that industry by itself is not likely to undertake because of technical and financial uncertainty, unquote, there are numerous instances of RPE rewards that indicate the agency is not following these guidelines. Instead, providing funding to companies that are already actively pursuing development of the technology area for which they are requesting funding. This is a serious issue. Taxpayer funding for R&D should only go toward areas that are too risky for private investment. Due to these concerns, Mr. Chairman, I, along with Chairman Hall, Chairman of the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, have requested that the Government Accounting Office 
undertake a study to review and report to, on the extent to which the, this problem is occurring with respect to other rewards. At least until this study is completed and Congress has had an opportunity to consider its findings, ARPA-E should not receive additional taxpayer money, especially in this current environment of fiscal disaster that we're heading towards. I urge support for the gentlelady's amendment. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Illinois. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Do it to clause six of rule 18. Further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Illinois will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington seek recognition? I have uh, Amendment 395 of the Decimus Speaker. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 395, printed in the Congressional Record, offered by Mr. Inslee of Washington. The gentleman from Washington is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we have a simple amendment that will help restore two principles to our budget. One is innovation and two is balance. What our uh, amendment would do would be add $20 million to the ARPA-E account. It would be fully paid for with a balance taken out of the fossil research account. And this is important for two fundamental reasons. Our nation's economic performance will live or it will die on the ability to innovate in new clean energy technologies. And today, tonight, when we're speaking, the Chinese are investing $786 billion in the development of new clean energy technologies, and yet what does this CR do to our advanced clean energy research budget? It cuts it by 85 percent. While the Chinese are racing ahead on clean energy, we're running backwards 85 percent in ARPA-E, which has tremendous potential in solar energy and efficient in advanced enhanced geothermal, in new efficiency in electric storage, in high capacity grid systems. This is our seed, cord, seed corn of innovation. And yet we have slashed it 85 percent in this CR. We are simply asking to reduce that cut to about 65 percent and add 20 million dollars. Now let me put this in context. That is the innovation part of this agenda. And for those who are critical of RPE, let me suggest in the first year of its operation, in the first year, it has attracted six uh, private equity investments for $23 million of Uncle Sam's investment of $100 million has been leveraged for private equity investment. This program has some promise. And we are cutting off tiny little crumbs to cut off the innovation budget for clean energy. It's a huge mistake. Now, balance... Here's where the balance part comes in. We want to pay for this, obviously. We don't want to cre create further deficit spending on this program. In the fossil fuel research budget, we've cut that 17 percent. And it's 10 times larger than the ARPA-E budget. That is wildly out of balance where we've cut ARPA-E instead of 17 percent. We've cut it 85 percent. Fossil fuels, we've got. $556 million in research. For RPE, we got $50 million unless we adopt the Inslee Amendment. So I would encourage us to get in the game of competing with China. You know, I was talking to former Governor Ted Strickland tonight about a company called Willard & Kelsley, WK Solar Group, a company that's developed a new way of manufacturing solar cells using a horizontal manufacturing project, much, much more efficient quicker manufacturing. If we don't start developing these technologies, the Chinese are going to have us for lunch. And this is a small thing, but the payoffs could be dramatic. We'd encourage more innovation, and we'd encourage more balance for the future. We'd recommend this amendment. I'd uh, reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen may and not I would yield back proudly the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey uh, I rise to claim uh, time in opposition. 
Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, uh, I uh, oppose the uh, gentleman's amendment, uh, which adds, uh, as we know, $50 million for RPE while cutting funding for, fossil energy, for the fossil energy program. The energy and water portion of this bill strikes a careful balance between national security, American competitiveness, and the grave responsibility of deficit re reduction. As written, this bill provides sufficient funding to keep RPE operational and active in fiscal year 2011 while we thoroughly evaluate the program in its future in the fiscal year 2012 appropriations process. RPE has shown some promise in advancing our competitiveness, but in the light of the tough trade-offs we've had to make in this bill, and indeed they've been tough, I can't support further increasing, increased funding for RPE before we've had a broader discussion of the new program. Further, to achieve this bill's historic levels of spending reductions, the bill has struck a finely tuned balance of support across programs within the Department of Energy. The amendment would reduce funding for fossil energy research and development. The program cut by the amendment ensures not only that fossil energy, which generates nearly 70 percent of the nation's electricity, is clean and efficient, but it, that it uses technologies invented in America and creates jobs here at home. Yet, because reducing spending is our top priority, all programs must sacrifice and the bill cuts fossil energy research and development well below the 2010 uh, uh, mark and 21 percent below fiscal year 2008. Further reductions to fossil energy can be damaging to the program's important goals and may lead to excessive job losses. For this reason and because further increases to RPE are currently unwarranted, I oppose the amendment. I yield back. be happy to yield. Suggested our amendment added 50 million. I know it was unintentional. We would only ask an additional 20 million. I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, the the you record much. is corrected, and you're absolutely Thank right. You. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman, gentleman from Washington. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Request the ayes and nays, Mr. Speaker. Does the recorded gentleman ask vote. for a Thank recorded you. vote? We'd ask for a recorded vote. Thank you very much. The gentleman asks for a reported, recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Washington will be postponed. The clerk will continue to read. Page 213, line 22, section 1418. No appropriation or authority made available shall be used to initiate a program, project, or activity if the program, project, or activity has not been funded by Congress unless prior approval is received from the Committees on Appropriations of the House and the Senate. Section 1419, no funds made available may be used by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to conduct activities associated with Yucca Mountain Geologic Repository License Application. Section 1420, the level for independent agencies, Appalachian Regional Commission, shall be $68,400,000. Section 1421, the level for independent agencies, Delta Regional Authority, shall be $11,700,000. Section 1422, the level for independent agencies, Denali Commission, shall be $10,800,000. Section 1423, the level for independent agencies, Northern Border Regional Commission shall be $0. Section 1424, the level for independent agencies, Southeast Crescent Regional Commission shall be $0. Section 1425, the total principal amount under the heading Department of Energy, Title 17 Innovative Technology Loan Guarantee Authority Loan Program is hereby reduced by $25 billion. Section 1426, of the un unobligated balances for desert terminal lakes under Section 2507 of the Farm Security and Rural Investment Act of 2002, $115 million is rescinded. 
Section 1427 of the unobligated balances, $21 million is rescinded by canceling, un by canceling unobligated balances from the Yazoo Basin Backwater Pump Mississippi project. Section 1428, the level for Corps of Engineers Civil Department of the Army investigations shall be $104 million. Section 1429, the level of Corps of Engineers Civil Department of the Department of the Army construction shall be one billion six hundred and ninety million dollars. Section fourteen thirty, the level for Corps of Engineers, Civil Department of the Army, Mississippi River and Tributaries shall be two hundred and thirty nine million six hundred thousand dollars. Section 1431, the level for Corps of Engineers, Civil, Department of the Army, Operation and Maintenance shall be $2,361,000,000. Section 1432, the level for Corps of Engineers, Civil, Department of the Army, Formerly Utilized Sites Remedial Action Program shall be $130 million. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Uh, uh, next uh, section, Mr. Chairman. Clerk will continue to read. Section 1433, the level for Department of for the Interior the Bureau of Reclamation right. Water and Related Resources shall be $913,500,000. For uh, what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? take up uh, Amendment 297. Clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 297, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. McClintock of California. The gentleman from California is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a poster child for, uh, I guess, what could best be described as Greens Gone Wild. Uh, as part of the uh, so called uh, Kalamath Hydroelectric Settlement Agreement, is proposed to use taxpayer funds to tear down four perfectly good hydroelectric dams uh, on the Kalamath that are producing 155 megawatts of the cleanest, cheapest electricity on the planet. That's enough to power over 150,000 homes uh, because we're told of catastrophic declines in salmon. Well, when I suggested building a salmon hatchery instead, I was informed there already is one. It produces 5 million salmon smolt each year, 17,000 of which return to that river as fully grown adults to spawn, but they're deliberately ignored in the population counts. To add insult to insanity, as they tear down these dams in the name of saving the salmon, they're also tearing down the fish hatchery that actually is saving the salmon. Uh, this amendment targets the study that uh, is underway to do so, uh, a policy that is manifestly in, insane as this is, uh, should not require $2 million of additional funding. And I yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we are prepared to accept the gentleman from California's amendment. The question is on uh, the amendment. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I strike the for what purpose, record. For what number purpose does the gentleman from Arizona rise? We uh, rise in support. This amendment simply reduces the water and related uh, resources account by $1.9 million. Given the limited nature of the amendment, I do not object to the amendment. I yield back my turn. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from California. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Next item. Clerk will read. Page 216, line 20. Section 1434. The level for Department of Energy, Energy Programs, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy shall be $1,467,400,000. For what purpose is the gentleman from California rise? Mr. Chairman, I ask to take up Amendment 315. Clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 315, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. McClintock of California. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment saves $247 million by relieving taxpayers of having to subsidize solar energy research and development. I'm uh, tempted to point out that solar power is not a new technology. Photovoltaic electricity generation was invented by Edmund Bescarel in 1836. That was 175 years ago. And in 175 years of continuing research and development and technological advancement, we have not yet been able to invent a more expensive way of generating electricity. Yet we're uh, perfectly comfortable telling our constituents that we're taking another quarter billion dollars from their families to throw at this 175-year-old technology uh, for no particular reason other than it makes us feel good. Uh, I'm also tempted to point out that uh, not only is this the most expensive way we've ever invented to generate electricity, but it also adds nothing, repeat nothing, to our baseline power. Our electricity systems operate on an integrated grid, meaning that we have to constantly match the power going onto the grid with the power coming off the grid. And since there's no way to tell when a cloud passing over a solar array will immediately drop the output to zero, we have to construct an equal amount of reliable conventional power to back up that solar power. In other words, for every kilowatt of solar power we add to the grid, we also have to pay to add an additional kilowatt of backup power. But the principal objection I have is this. This technology was truly on the verge of a breakthrough after 175 years. Investors would be tripping over themselves to get a piece of the action. If they are, there's no need to subsidize it. And if they're not, we have no right to force American taxpayers to make investments that uh, no investor in his right mind would make. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman New Jersey. from New Jersey rise? I rise to, uh, in opposition uh, to the amendment. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, the continuing resolution before us enacts historic spending reductions, but it does so by striking a careful balance between deficit reduction and other important goals. I regret that the gentleman's amendment goes far beyond the point of balance, and thus I must oppose it. Mr. Chairman, deficit reduction is the bill's top priority, and our bill already significantly reduces the energy and efficiency and renewable energy account. As written, our bill cuts that account to 30 to 35 percent below current levels and 38 percent or nearly 900 million below fiscal year 2000, the 2000 budget request. This amendment cuts the excess and provides only enough funding our bill cuts the excess and provides only enough funding to continue past commitments leaving little room left to cut. While I support the intent of the gentleman's amendment as it aims to reduce further spending, we must do so responsibly with a careful balance among deficit reduction, jobs, and our nation's energy security. The gentleman's amendment fails to maintain this balance and would, to my mind, create undue job losses, which would be considerable and irreversible damage to this particular program. And I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arizona rise? In uh, opposition of the amendment, I strike the Just requisite number of words. I, I join the uh, gentleman is recognized for five minutes. I, I join the chairman. Uh, we need a mix of energy to gain energy independence. We cannot just rely on the mix of energy we have today, where 70 percent of our energy is generated through coal or natural gas. Rather than sacrifice their future, we should be looking at methods of closing loopholes for the oil and gas industry. And I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from California. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. The amendment is not agreed to. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York rise? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. It is an amendment uh, numbered number four in the congressional record to save 27,500 jobs in home renovation. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number four, printed in the congressional record, offered by Mr. Tonko of New York. 
Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this amendment to Section 1434 of the Republican Spending Bill. The section includes language that bans funds allocated to energy efficiency and renewable energy from being used for the Weatherization Assistance Program or the State Energy Program. This rider has nothing to do with reducing funds. It is a policy rider. My amendment would simply strike that language from this bill. This amendment does not add a single dollar to the deficit, the continuing resolution, or energy efficiency and renewable energy programs. It preserves the Republican cuts, though misguided, to energy efficiency and renewable energy. It merely states that weatherization and state energy programs remain eligible for funds. There are many cuts in this bill that we cannot fix for procedural reasons, and there are many more that Republicans will oppose for political reasons. But this is something we can save. This amendment has strong bipartisan appeal. It is about lowering utility bills for people on the brink. It is about preserving construction, inspection, and renovation jobs. It is about states' rights. It has been a harsh and unrelenting winter in many parts of America. We should not be leaving our friends and our neighbors out in the cold. The State Energy Program is a 30-year-old program that provides resources to states for energy efficiency and renewable energy, and it works. I know this because I used to run this program for New York State as the President and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. For every $1 in funding, it yields $7.22 in annual energy savings. Each $1 in State Energy Program federal funds is leveraged by $10.71 of state and private funds. States receiving this funding are eligible to do energy audits on over 15,000 buildings per year, including residential, commercial, and industrial properties. They are also able to renovate over 13,000 buildings per year to be more energy efficient. Think of it, energy efficiency as our fuel of choice. The other program my amendment addresses is the Weatherization Assistance Program. Some 38.6 million low-income, elderly, and disabled households are eligible for renovations to become more energy efficient and to lower their electric bills. Per household, this program creates a $437 savings or more in annual utility bills, or about 35% off of a typical utility bill. In 2010 alone, weatherized homes nationally would have saved some $2.1 billion. The weatherization program decreases national energy consumption by the equivalent of 24.1 million barrels of oil annually. For every $1 invested, weatherization returns $2.51 to the household and our society. This is an appropriations bill. According to my colleagues across the aisle, it is a bill with the sole purpose of reducing the deficit, a noble goal. However, the State Energy Program and Weatherization Assistance Program rider does not reduce the deficit by one cent. It is not about funding. It is about restricting programs that work and playing politics as usual. We should be focused on creating jobs, reducing our dependence on foreign oil, and innovating for our future. My amendment restores our ability to do all three without adding a single cent to this bill. I ask for your support of this amendment and yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? I rise to t uh, claim time in opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, while the energy efficiency and renewable energy program supports research and development important to American competitiveness, the program has seen a 30 percent increase since the fiscal year 2008 and received $16.8 billion in stimulus funding in the Recovery Act. Now is therefore the right time to cut the fat and replace indiscriminate spending increases with smart prioritization and oversight. Two programs within this account, weatherization assistance and the state energy program, do not focus on competitiveness and instead pass funding on to state and local governments. These two programs together have $4.7 billion in unspent Recovery Act funding and have encountered substantial management challenges in the last two years, and I may say substantial. The bill eliminates funding in the fiscal year 2011 for weatherization 
and state energy programs whose unspent Recovery Act funding should sustain him through fiscal year 2011. In fact, at current implementation rates, which have been incredibly slow, slow unspent funding would last through 2012. The amendment ignores these common sense facts and the imperative to reduce spending by moving unneeded funding back into an already bloated program. I therefore oppose the amendment and urge members to do the same. I gentleman, yield back. Gentleman yields back. Chairman. For what uh, purpose does the gentleman from, from New York rise? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask for a vote. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from New York. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. I ask for a recorded York. vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from New York will be postponed. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Pardon me. For the, what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk amendment 259. Amendment number 259, printed in the Congressional Record, offered by Mr. Latta of Ohio. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Amendment 259 will cut $70 million from the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, which I intend to be removed from the Freedom Car Initiative. Currently, HR1 funds the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy at $1,467,400,000 for the remainder of fiscal year 2011. This amendment would reduce that amount to $1,397,400,000. This office already received $16.8 billion in stimulus funds and $2.24 billion was appropriate in fiscal year 2010. While citizens across the country are struggling to pay their bills, it would be very difficult to justify not being able to cut $70 million from this office. With Americans also struggling with, ga with higher gasoline prices and other fuel costs uh, rising, Congress should focus on legislation that allows us to utilize the resources we have available to drive prices down. The free market is the best place for technological innovation. Reducing taxes and eliminating burdens and regulations will allow private companies to bring new, more fuel efficient technologies to market when it becomes cost effective. With a forecast deficit of $1.6 trillion this year and the national debt scheduled to triple in 10 years, I have serious concerns with spending more funds on programs that have received massive increases from stimulus spending. The President released his budget, his budget proposal this week, which reflects a pattern of record spending and even higher taxes. This continued spending in, in funds that the United States government does not have as we continue to borrow from other nations. During the last session of Congress alone, the President signed into law over $1.8 trillion in new government spending and over $670 billion in new job-damaging tax hikes. My 70, billion, or my 70 million cut will be a small reduction in an overbloated federal budget and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? In opposition. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Five Chairman, minutes. the Energy Efficiency and Renewable uh, Energy Program supports technology research and development to keep America competitive and ensure our access, our access to domestic energy sources. While these are critically important goals, so too is meeting our pledge to substantially reduce the nation's deficit beginning this year. Our bill cuts energy efficiency and renewable energy 35 percent below the current level and 38 percent, or 888 million, below the President's fiscal year 2011 budget request. The bill limits funding for programs that are still supported by unspent Recovery Act dollars. It also eliminates earmarks and slims down research programs by more than $500 million while preserving core activities supporting American competitiveness in emerging energy industries. After these cuts, there's simply no more fat to trim. Cutting the program would cost excessive job losses and defaults on past commitments. While I support the gentleman's efforts to further reduce spending, this amendment would go too far beyond the careful balance that we've crafted in this bill. I and the committee fully intend to exert unprecedented oversight of this program. So as we move forward, I would be happy to work with the gentleman as we do. However, I must regret to, that I oppose his amendment.
and they yield back. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arizona rise? Strike the record number of words, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman uh, is recognized for five minutes. I join the chairman in opposition to this amendment. Uh, as I stated before, we need a mix of energy to gain energy independence. We cannot just rely on the mix of energy that we have today, where 70 percent of our energy is generated through coal or natural gas. Rather than sacrifice our future, we should be looking at methods of closing loopholes for the oil and gas industry. I'm in opposition to the amendment, and I yield back balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question.